So the first step in making camp coffee is heating some water. In order to heat water, you need to make fire to boil some water. So in order to make fire, you need some firewood. Having dry firewood is really helpful. So this is a wax canvas. Uh, basically, it's a firewood collecting tarp. So with this, I can basically pick up a bunch of firewood and then I got some handles to carry it with. Not that I'll be using that much. But it also makes a really good work surface for preparing or um, processing wood. And I go out with a little hatchet if I need to um, break off some pieces of dead wood. So for this, we're going to be collecting wood which is already dead and down. And so we're not gonna be uh, damaging any living trees or anything like that for this project. So um, one thing to note is that what I like to do is to go out and harvest the firewood the day before I plan to make coffee so it can be dry when I need it. So what I'll do is I'll collect some firewood in my tarp and then I'll process it. So cut it up into kindling and tinder and then I'm going to lay it out in the sun to dry. So before evening what I'll do is I'll roll it back up in this tarp so it'll be nice and dry and ready for morning. Because trying to harvest twigs to start a fire the first thing in the morning is difficult because the dew makes all the wood wet out in the forest. So let's go get some firewood. This is in, at a bend in the river and during the last flood a ton of driftwood washed up here. So this is basically a whole ton of firewood that's available for the harvesting where it won't harm nature in any way to collect a little bit of this firewood for making coffee. So we'll go ahead and start that process. Our twig stoves does not require very much wood and certainly doesn't require very large wood. So I'm just going to be picking up some very small pieces of wood and throwing them on the tarp so we can collect them and use them in making fire. So I'll try and collect the wood that's on the top surface because it will be the driest. Um, and I don't need to collect very big pieces at all. I just want to make sure that it's wood and not vines. So we're just going to go around here and do some picking. The root balls of fallen trees or of driftwood trees are excellent sources of twigs for your twig stove because each of these root branches has been in the air drying for a long time. So the wood is still has a lot of great energy to it and it is super dry. So this stash of firewood was collected from this rather massive driftwood field in about 10 minutes. All right, so now that we've collected some firewood, we're gonna to have to process it. So this will involve taking these pieces of wood and getting them down into pieces that we can use in our twig stove. It's primarily the activity of taking long sticks and just breaking them down into the size sticks that will fit inside the twig stove. So well, you can feed some in. Generally speaking, it's good to start off with as small a pieces as possible. So. I'm going to break them down into four inch, three to four inch lengths, more or less. In order to make some of the smaller shavings that I'm going to need to make a fire, I'm just going to basically take a stick and I'm going to carve off some curls, which I can use when starting the actual fire. So I'll use these as the first size wood above the tinder, which is used just to um, catch the spark and turn that into the first flame. This will be, I will basically make a whole bunch of these curls and make a nest out of those. And that is something that I will be able to throw a spark into and start fire.
So here is all the firewood and fire starter and kindling that are needed for tonight and tomorrow. So it's currently drying in the sun. And all that was really needed to process this wood were two things. One was a hatchet for doing most of the splitting and a knife for doing the curls. So this is a Gerber hatchet, which also happens to have a nifty little knife in its handle uh, held in by a magnet. And also we have the Tom Brown Tracker Mini or the Tom Brown, Tom Brown Tracker 4 by Tops. And that knife, it makes short work in making all these curls. Okay, all the fire materials are done drying for the day. We have, again, we have twigs and wood. We have shavings. And we have some cedar bark, which is the innermost layer uh, scraped from the bark. And we have some dried tree moss. So between those four ingredients, we will be able to make fire with simply a ferro rod spark. All right, it's early morning and there is dew on everything. It was very cold last night, probably about 45 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe colder. Um, and as you can see, dew has settled on everything, rendering it heavy and wet. The entire campsite included, except for our firewood. So the firewood was kept under the bench and it is in our wax canvas fire roll. So, all the firewood is bone dry and good as new when we dried it in the 85 degree uh, temperature sunshiny weather we had yesterday. We're going to use this water. One of the reasons why we can use this water is you can see in the distance, you can see the bluish hint, tint to it. That is from the glacial flower, which is flowing into the water from its source, indicating that this is probably pretty clean water. And also, when looking into the water itself and looking into the bottom, you can see there's no algae or moss growing on the rocks that are in the water. That indicates that there is probably not a lake upstream. So this water is probably clean enough to drink, although we'll still need to boil it. So of course, to make camp coffee, you need fire, water, and coffee. So coffee, um, I, this isn't the coffee that's in this bag, but I basically uh, bring a foil bag for co carrying coffee. And that's because it is light tight and airtight. This one, I cut off and left the valve so I could squeeze the excess air out of it. And I have a grip stick so I could reclose it and have it sealed completely. So this also packs very flat and can fit inside my bear canister for camping. Um, I have a gram scale. So we could weigh out exactly 21 grams of coffee for our morning coffee grind. And there's a paper filter to make sure that I don't have a cup of mud and rather a cup of coffee. There is a hand coffee grinder here so I can get a nice even grind for excellent pour over. So speaking of the pour over, uh, this is a GSI um, pour over filter holder, which goes over a cup. And this is a double wall insulated cup that I have cut the handle off of because it's insulated. I don't need anything to uh, protect me from its heat because it's not really an issue. Um, in terms of water, we talked about water. We got water from the river right over here, which is nice snow fed, snow fed, good mineralized, high quality water. Um, for fire, we have uh, yesterday, we produced some good dry firewood. So we have firewood, which we split using the hatchet. And we have some little shavings and some um, cedar bark fluff, which we obtained using the small knife. And we have a ferro rod and striker in order to start the fire. And for the fire, we have this um, titanium twig stove. So this is three by three inches. So it's very small and it packs down flat. Um, I have a piece of leather to act as a um, pot holder because it occupies very little space in the kit. 
and I'm using for my pour over kettle I'm using this uh, titanium snow peak cup and the reason being is because this has a hole in the edge so I can place it this way and have very fine control over the pouring action so that's why that particular one and this also has a pair of teeth that enable it to hold on to the bottom edge of the cup which makes it better for pouring so that actually works pretty well for doing pour over so that's the entire set so we have again we have the coffee hand grinder airtight paper filter gram scale we have the filter holder insulated cup we have the pour over um, kettle which is the snow peak with the uh, hole in the side and we have the ability to make fire from available resources by producing this yesterday or processing the wood yesterday and making sure it's dry so it's available even in the morning when it is absolutely cold and everything is wet so that's where we're at so the next thing we'll do is to grind the coffee all right so we're going to get our coffee ready here so what i'm going to do is to start by weighing the beans so i'll put up my bag of beans and i'll take the bottom off my press and use it on the scale so currently the scale is set to grams. It is paired at zero. So I'm gonna pour out 21 grams of coffee. So that is 21.00 grams of coffee, which works out to eh, right about two cups on the actual scale. So from there, we'll go ahead and grind it. So put the coffee beans in the top, screw this in the bottom, turn off our scale, put the lid on, and then grind some coffee. Now we'll put the coffee in the coffee filter. I basically flatten down these two ridges in order for it to set more correctly within the cup. So I will paper in the cup here. And we'll dump the grounds in the filter. So that, nice evenly ground grounds, ready to go. So now we just have to heat some water. So to do that, first, we'll pour water in the cup. So I'm gonna boil 16 ounces of water, even though I just need 12, because the paper and the grounds are gonna soak up some and not let that continue. So I'll put the lid on this and let's get ready to make some fire. We'll take some of the shavings we made yesterday and we'll put them in here. A little bit more shavings, make a little nest out of it. Put a little bit of that dried tree moss on there. And a fair amount of that cedar bark shavings on top here and make a little hole in it to receive the spark now I'm just going to throw a spark on it
caught on nicely. I'll throw a few curls on top of that. Get the fire going. That's gonna have to burn down a little bit before we can put our pot on it. Now we can put the cup on. Now we're heating our water. And the water's boiling. We're gonna let it come to a roiling boil for a little bit longer. And then we'll take it off and be ready to pour. Now that our water's boiled, and been allowed to sit for a couple minutes to bring the temperature back down to the ideal pour over brewing temperature, which is somewhere around 195, 196 degrees. Go ahead and make sure that everything's ready. Make sure the lid is hooked on the front edge so it doesn't spill with the hole facing forward. I put my hot pad over it so I can put my thumb on the top, yet still hold it. And then begin by pouring around the edges, a little bit in the middle. Let the coffee bloom. And this is just to let the grinds absorb some coffee before I do the next pour over stint. And then I will go ahead and pour around again. And I pour a little bit at a time each time. And I go around the sides to get the grounds to wash down toward the middle, just giving them a little bit more contact each time. Just to make sure no ground gets left behind. And this lid is just somewhere for me to put the grounds after brewing the coffee so I don't stain the table. And it's more or less done dripping. So it took about five minutes to do that pour over. And then I will simply take out the grounds and lift them over here. Put them on a lid to keep it from staining. And I could take this off. Put it upside down on top of that. And we are done. So, 
thanks for watching. That's all there is to making uh, making coffee while you're camping, the simple way. <laughs>